Hi everyone, Nix User here. Now I'm telling you right now, I haven't had a fun one. This is my second recording of this video. Thank you very much for FFmpeg dutifully not recording over a previous file that I recorded and me not noticing. Anyway, moving right on, this is Fedora 28. Now, Fedora 28 was just released. You probably realize it coincided with the latest Ubuntu release. I think that's 18.04 going by the months and all that. I don't really go with all the names and all that sort of uh, stuff, but um, so I'm not going to be sitting there quoting the animal names for you. But um, anyway, so moving on, um, I'm just going to basically uh, do a bit of an overview of the applications that are installed here. And uh, further to that, I want to just point out one of the key highlight features uh, in here. Um, but uh, anyway, let's move on. So the applications that we have, we'll just go into all yeah, we can see boxes there, which is for virtualization. Per personally, I like to use um, Vert Manager. I think it's fantastic. Uh, interfaces with libvirt uh, seamlessly, which and uh, which is kind of used for the entire framework for virtualization, uh, native virtualization on uh, GNU Plus Linux. Uh, you've got the calculator, which I'm not going to go through. You've got some organizational tools in this as well, such as the uh, calendar, uh, clocks, um, contacts, documents, uh, evolution. Um, so you've also got the LibreOffice suite here, which you can tell. Um, one of my favorite applications here is the Maps application, which I was just uh, doing a brief look at uh, before, and we'll be able to just tell in a moment when it decides to load uh, where exactly I am in the world. And I happen to be in uh, sunny Perth, uh, not so sunny lately, but uh, I've lived in Brisbane. I grew up in, uh, in Brisbane. Uh, Sydney I've uh, visited, Melbourne I've lived in, visited Tasmania, uh, never been to South Australia, uh, Perth I've, obviously I'm living in right now, and uh, Darwin I have also visited. So interesting times there. I've also visited when I was a child, Bundaberg, funnily enough. But anyway, this isn't a geography lesson, and certainly I'm no good at geography. But let's move on to the main applications. Um, so you've got the photos, which you've uh, you kind of probably seen that sort of stuff before to do with photo management and that type of thing. You've got the music player rhythm box, which you know some people kind of like. Uh, I don't. I tend to use MPV, VLC, that type of thing. Not so much VLC these days, but MPV. Uh, I'm very relaxed when it comes to you know going and looking through my cascading hierarchy of music um, and other media. Um, You've also got the uh, Firefox here. I know I'm going a little bit of a piecemeal approach, but I'm just going on to the applications that kind of matter. Um, so you've got Firefox there, which you just saw, uh, which is, you know, uh, fine and dandy. Although recently I found some websites like the uh, Lenovo website, when you're actually looking through and configuring a computer, mm, doesn't work so much. Tried Chrome and it works fine. We'll get to Chrome in a bit. Um, anyway, uh, you've got files now. Files is just still, again, it's just missing that kind of feature of copy, uh, you know, copy from one place to another. Now, you could just go and uh, uh, put it to the left-hand side, go Control-N and uh, launch another one and shift that to the right nicely like that. But it's a bit tacky, and I kind of feel that they really need to introduce that. But going back to their web page, you can see here that there's changes to files in uh, GNOME 3.28, which happens to be the version of uh, GNOME that we're in at the moment. And uh, the unfortunate thing is they, uh, they talk about starred files like I'm not sure that I really care about favorite files to be honest but then they talk about desktop icons and that they're taking it away and that there are workarounds for it give me a break I mean really even this person said here I found an acceptable alternative solution use another desktop now I'm not going to play for Fedora for this this is a GNOME thing but I know that GNOME and Red Hat are kind of you know in each other's pockets a little bit so well, at least that's my presumption that they're a little bit entangled with each other. Um, but anyway, uh, it, while we're on the topic of where you can get Fedora, you can actually just download it here. And um, you know, you've got the workstation version. I had issues with my main desktop. Um, so this we're actually on my test bench at the moment. So we'll come back to those little bits and bobs in a moment. You've got the uh, settings in here. They also have, uh, you can download the tweak the tweak settings if you want to. Funnily enough, it uh, is able to detect it in here that it's in the uh, software repo. So we'll just go back from there. You've got simple scan. I've got a HP uh, M277DW, but uh, unfortunately the scan side of things doesn't work over the network. Uh, but printing, I can confirm, works very nicely uh, with cups. And I've got to tell you that if you want a calculator or you want a printer, I'll tell you HP 
pretty good. I mean, I've done that video uh, on the HP Prime. I'll link that below. You can take a look at that. Um, and as far as their printers are concerned, I only have very minor issues with using Cups, Linux, and um, and uh, my printer. Uh, one thing I have a reservation, though, is with their laptops, but they might have changed over the years. I haven't had one in about 10 years, uh, but nonetheless, you know, I've still got reservations about them. My wife's had a HP in recent times, and uh, she had to actually send it back. Um, but anyway, let's move on. I digress. Uh, you got Sundry for bug um, bug reporting. Um, you got the G Edit. I tend to use Vim, of course, and I just go through the alternatives because I tend to tend to use um, thinner al thinner alternatives. Um, moving on to the next bit, we got the Archive Manager, which you could certainly replace with Tar, no problem at all. Disk Usage Analyzer use DF. Uh, disks. Uh, well, I don't know how much they're doing with disks in here. What do they got here? Yeah, format disk. So I guess it's kind of like departed that kind of thing. So you could certainly use F disk if you wanted to for that, uh, or G uh, or G parted or parted itself. Um, document viewer. That's a PDF viewer. Uh, it might be viewer some other formats as well, but I tend to use um, U PDF. It's really lightweight. Um, logs. Yeah, give or take on that. You can look at your logs uh, in slash fire slash log if you really want to, and you can use Journal D's Journal Control Program uh, from System D if you really want to, because this is a GNU plus Linux distribution, and it seems that every GNU plus Linux system and its dog has System D in its installed in at the moment, and that is actually one of the reasons why I'm why I'm trialing the use of uh, for, uh, FreeBSD on my desktop. I don't like um, going against the Unix philosophy, but it's a different story. Um, let's go into uh, you got System Monitor there, which again you could just use Top or HTop. HTop is really nice and has become a first class citizen in my view on um, on FreeBSD. Uh, and next, of course, you got the terminal. But uh, I mean, I use uh, anything from URXVT to ST. I did a video on uh, ST a while back. I'll put that in the link below as well. Um, so uh, let's go and get onto the topic at hand that I was referring to before, and that is software. Now you can see here I've got the third-party repository uh, bits and bobs up here. I'm going to actually just close that properly and bring that up. Now. I have fiddled around with this, so I can't promise that it's a vanilla install. I can't promise that you're going to have uh, RPM Fusion down here, okay? Because I actually went to the website to install it. So hey, if someone wants to correct me, if I'm wrong, I'm not going to go through the process of reinstalling Fedora just to find it out. But I don't recall seeing it down there until I added third-party repositories and I um, actually went to the website instead. I could have gone just to the website instead instead of adding third-party repositories, but let's see how this process goes. You can just watch that. Okay, so we've got that now. And then uh, if I go into RPM Fusion, it's enabled. Okay, free updates there. Um, now, obviously they're trying to sell a few points here. They've got the one for NVIDIA, they've got the one for Steam, they've got a few other bits and bobs as well that I'm not so interested in. Namely this guy, don't know what that's about. One that's probably a bit of a highlight is Google Chrome, and I referred to that before. Now, uh, the I was saying before that the um, that Firefox doesn't work too well when you're actually customizing a laptop on um, on Lenovo's website. Well, it turns out that uh, Google Chrome's does, so that's fine. Uh, worked well uh, with that before. Um, I'm not going to test it in this just distribution just now, but I, I have worked with it before. It's fine. So let's um, let's have a talk about this repositories thing because repositories are an interesting beast because I know that I did a video recently on the OpenSUSE uh, repositories and you'll know from other distributions like Debian they make it pretty plain clear that you can add repositories using the uh, using apt um, uh, apps source uh, list directory sources dot list uh, file rather. So yeah, I think that this is uh, one of those things that they could have added years ago. They were always reluctant and they denied that. It's, it's almost like they were denying that other software repositories existed. Um, but now they've added it in here, in here. But nonetheless, I think they could have showcased this RPM, RPM Fusion right at the top. It's free software. It's not like it's non-free software. It's just potentially patent encumbered stuff, such as VLC, which some people say may or may not be patent encumbered. 
uh, MPV and FFmpeg, all from the same sort of reasons, media transcoding issues there. So yeah, it's one of those things where you kind of wish that it had been there for ages. I installed it, um, the RPM Fusion repo, just because I needed FFmpeg and I wasn't feeling up for a compile today. I just wanted to get the video out to you. It's been a few weeks or maybe a couple of weeks since I did a video and I want you guys to sort of uh, remain current on what's happening. So yeah, but basically, do I like this distribution? Will I main it? No, I'm currently trialing uh, FreeBSD. I've managed to get FreeBSD to play semi-nicely with my desktop machine. Further that, I tried using uh, Fedora 28 on my desktop machine and I'll point to the error that I got uh, just up in the right-hand screen just now. Uh, so yeah, anyway, some issues with uh, Fedora 28 on my main desktop, but absolutely no problems on my test bench, which is a very vanilla KB Lake machine. Anyway, guys, I hope you liked this video. I hope you learned something from it. Uh, if you did like this video, please bang the like button and ding the bell uh, if you want to receive notifications of new videos up and coming. And remember to subscribe to this uh, channel and share with your friends. Anyway, guys, I'm going to head off now. I hope you're enjoying whatever it is you're doing today, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.